Ladies and gentlemen, at this time to honor America, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps for the playing of our national anthem. Welcome to awesome. Horseshoe, Indianapolis, wire to wire. There's a lot of water, but where's me ship? I found Racing Rachel, track announcer. <laughs> I'm DP, He's dead pirate. He's the dread pirate Dooley. It's such a long meet. It's killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I brought him it's tired this. me out. And he shows up with this, and I thought, That's you know That's my what? last day. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Before vacation. <laughs> I and I go back to New Orleans, <laughs> Pirates Alley, spend the winter. With the winch. Oh, Racing Rachel's going yep. to come down He's for the Lacombe Risen Star, the Louisiana That's Derby. Right. That's right, I am. She'll I'll set wear sails on Nola. <laughs> and Joe Christofek still won't like our costumes. No, he's not. He's going to be mad because I'm not that girl from the karate thing. But happy Halloween, everyone. Trick or treat. Look how great our AV uh, crew did us this wonderful background and the great intro today. And uh, even though we don't have a ton of um, Halloween festivities, John and I decided we would be in the <laughs> Halloween spirit. So we dressed up, and it is a definitely gloomy day, though, It's today. a gray, spooky day here at Horseshoe <laughs> Indianapolis. Sloppy track to handicap. We have nine races. But, uh, Rachel, really quick, this on the heels of just a terrific, my first, Indiana yeah. Champions Day 2022. We had uh, 13 races and uh, some outstanding performances. Speaking of DP, the real DP, Deshaun Parker with a uh, stakes hat trick, no more fake news, spot on justice, and imagine the moon. Three stakes wins here on Saturday, Indiana Champions Day 2022. Yeah, what a day for Deshaun. I mean, he just, uh, they were some really nice rides in those stakes. I was so happy for him. And James Flores as well took three mm -hmm. of the quarter horse races on Saturday as it was Champions Day. So we had half of the day was thoroughbred, half of the day was quarter horse. It was pretty much a double for, for John and everybody in the crew. Thank you so much. It was such a uh, team effort. But yeah, great day for those uh, two. And also Gary Patrick had a double, including a stakes win. And then Randy Smith, of course, I think uh, both of his wins were stakes races. Uh, the final for the uh, Miss Roxy Little, a lot of eyes were on piloted by an angel. I mean, of course, with the meet leaders. Juan Marquez riding for Randy Smith. Randy Smith won it, but with winner spirit under jockey uh, James Flores. And that was uh, closing out 
Indiana Champions Day 2022, but uh, mentioned Deshaun Parker. He had a terrific day. Uh, Gary Patrick, uh, an excellent uh, Indiana Champions Day 2022. Thanks to all that uh, joined us here at the races and all who tuned in. Also among the quarter horse winners, RK Lady Dana, Tony Cunningham was thrilled. Yeah. Uh, the Illinois bred uh, mayor, uh, her owner, uh, and also Francisco Quintero. It was his first career stakes win, and it came aboard R.K. Laney Dana in one of the big ones, quarter horse races on Indiana Champions Day. Yeah, that was really exciting. He won his first career race earlier this year, and in the same year won his first stakes race. That's a big milestone for him, so congratulations. And Jose was hot, yeah. too, man. Mm -hmm. Jose had a really great day, yeah. and he did really well on the 22nd, Los Ponies. too. Yeah, we've had two weekends of Los Ponies. And I could definitely get used to it. He does a great job. Yeah, we had a great team assembled here to cover uh, 2022 Indiana Champions Day. Of course, my great broadcast partner, Racing Rachel. We were joined by Brian Aragoni, Mr. B Analyst on Twitter. And of course, along with uh, the great Martha Clausen and uh, Los Ponies, uh, you mentioned Jose Contreras uh, with uh, three winners in five quarter horse races here on Saturday. Today, Rachel said uh, gloomy. That's one way to describe it. Uh, gray skies, another sloppy track. That's one more. We are off the X-Mark Mowers turf course so with all nine races here today starting at 2.30 on a sloppy main track for the official race day forecast. Let's see what uh, the crew at WRTV has brewing on Halloween. <laughs> From Indy's streaming news leader, this is a WRTV update. And good Monday and happy Halloween to you. I'm WRTV Storm Team Meteorologist Todd Clausen. Uh, John and Rachel will be dealing with spotty showers here throughout the afternoon and into the evening hours. So kind of a damp and dreary and kind of gloomy day for us here as we work our way throughout the afternoon and the races. The good news, though, in the forecast is while we'll be dealing with some spotty showers, they're all going to be very, very light and temperatures today fairly mild as we settle into the mid-60s. Uh, me swashbuckling friend there, <laughs> WRTV. <laughs> Cheers uh, for all your forecasts here all season long. And of course, we wrap up oh, the meat on the day me before so Thanksgiving as I carve up a turkey. Uh, Davy Jones Locker. He's going to go visit his mom and take some time off. You know, I have taken a few days off this meat, but John has been here every day without fail. And he is going, he's, he's, mushed all his days <laughs> together and he's going to take off so he can uh, get some things together before he has to start fairground so sad but true it's our last day together on the show and then i'm stuck with b <laughs> and jimmy mac but that's okay i love them and again the season will wrap up the day before thanksgiving but uh, have no fear i'll be following all on social media at john g dooley at racing rachel m speaking of saturday we were having uh an uh Oak and Eden uh, tasting here on Saturday. Actor Forey J. Smith, a lot of fans of Lloyd on Yellowstone were here on Saturday. Uh, Forey had big crowds around him uh, all day long. There's uh, just a look at uh, that and raising money, of course, for the Shriners Hospital for Children. $460 raised, 92 tastings. I really wanted to taste some of that coffee infused whiskey okay, during, uh, during the day. So how was it? <clears throat> it? It was strong. It's 114. I mean, I had a teeny strong. dip and it tasted like it was like drinking gas. You know what it reminds me of? Those cartoons where the guy has a little like clay bucket with the three X's on it. That's like what it was like. It was strong. It's a sipping whiskey with ice. I like the grog. Okay, well, that's what that's what Tim DeWitt just give said. Give me he some said, whiskey. Rachel, you need to have one of those things and carry some grog down. I said, don't give me grog. I'll drink it. I'll give a few. <laughs> I'll donate my share of a few pence uh, to Forey Smith <laughs> and try out that uh, special blend of Forey Smith's it was Oak good. and Eden. It was strong. Whiskey. Yeah. Definitely have to try that uh, this good. winter down at the uh, down at the He was so fairground. nice. Did you get to meet him? No, I didn't. I you saw him. Didn't. I saw him in the hallway. I saw him in the hallway up in the executive offices, but I didn't want to be that guy that and, like, and I wasn't feeling well yeah, and kind of you, you know, know say, hey, Forey, you, you know, right. do you mind for you know, do you mind a moment, uh, you know, photo on the on the track announcer and also a really tired pirate. Yes, he was really nice. He was so <laughs> down to earth. He ultimately, I know you probably saw from up there. I'm not sure if you're watching. He jumped over the winter circle to take pictures with fans. I mean, he and was Tim terrific. and the security officers had to like yeah. follow him out the gate and then walk him back in. But he he jumped the jumped the gate. Man. Oh, you got video of it. <laughs> Brian got video of it on his phone of him jumping over to get pictures with fans. He was such a such a nice down to earth guy. We had uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was uh, the AQHA Bank of America Challenge Championship. That was a terrific night of racing here uh, under the Saturday Night Lights. Last Saturday afternoon, we started at uh, 12.10. 
Uh, last Saturday, it was the 2022 Indiana Champions Day. Cheers to all that joined us here, and uh, thanks to all the bettors that have supported our racing program since we kicked off uh, mid uh, to late April, and of course, the season wrapping up the day before Thanksgiving. But uh, coming up uh, this coming weekend, it is the Breeders' Cup, and don't forget, you can watch and wager on the World Thoroughbred Championships down the road at Keeneland uh, Racecourse this coming Saturday, the Breeders' Cup. Doors will open on Friday at 11 a.m., and of course, also on Friday, November the 4th, as uh, they race uh, here, uh, the final month of the meet, but uh, the big World Thoroughbred Championships coming up uh, this coming Friday and Saturday. Yeah, and we're going to be open, so if you can't make it and you want to get out of the house, come watch it here at the track. We'll have all of our simulcasts um, and properties open for you to be able to enjoy the Breeders' Cup races. One week from today, though, no uh, live racing here on Monday, November 7th. Again, uh, I'll be taking time off before heading down to Fairgrounds Racecourse uh, and uh, slots in New Orleans. But uh, Jimmy McNerney will be filling in for me. But uh, no live racing one week from today. So a uh, Monday dark day for racing. Yeah, so we're going to take that day off. And they just told me in a meeting, and I'm glad I put it on the notes because if I showed up on Monday and we weren't working, I was going to be very upset. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so don't come uh, November 7th is what we're trying but to say. But there will be Veterans Day racing yes. as we salute all of our veterans. Trading that Friday, Monday. November 11th, of course. Uh, thank you to all that serve, all that have in the past, all that continue to serve our great nation. Veterans Day special program here Friday, November 11th with a post time of 2, 10 p.m. That's a great shot, of course. Uh, veterans, their family, not only the veterans, those that are in our military, our, uh, our service branches, but also their families. And uh, we will honor all of our veterans here on Friday, November 11th, Rachel. Yes. Be sure to join us. It's going to be amazing. We're still going to have the Legends Handicapping Day for Veterans Contest, and we're also going to have the same kind of thing we did last year, a select group of handicappers uh, betting to raise money for our um, HVAF, which is downtown, the um, Veterans Foundation that we have here in Indianapolis. So very excited uh, for that day. It's going to be an amazing day of racing. Nice, nice card. I'm sure Chris pulls and always pulls together a nice one. I see land. I also see Brian Aragoni ready with his 50 cent pick five suggested ticket here on a Monday at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Happy Halloween. We're back with B right after this. Arr. Arr. <laughs> Excitement with Twinspires.com, the official betting partner of the Kentucky Derby and Breeders' Cup. With Twinspires.com, place legal wagers and watch live horse racing wherever you are on any device. Sign up, play, and win today. New players use promo code FREE100 on sign up to start your $100 bonus. With Twinspires.com, you can bet on horse racing. Get the Twinspires.com app to receive special offers and the most up to date information. Terms and conditions apply. Void where prohibited. Please wager responsibly. What's going on, racing fans? Back here at Horseshoe, Indianapolis. I had no idea that it was uh, Halloween day or costume day. We've got the kids all taken care of. But I didn't have an outfit for myself, so I've got my good friend, Sho. And uh, Sho is a nice horse. Um, he comes out, and he's great with kids, but he's not a great moneymaker. He costs me more money than I ever make. And that's what horses do for me typically 9 out of 10 days. So we named him Sho because we're usually betting to win, and our horses usually run to show. Um, so we, I want to thank our special guest who joined us on a beautiful Halloween right out here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. We are back in action for another live racing. A big shout out to John and Rachel 
for not telling me that they were going to dress up in costume so I could be well prepared myself. Um, but we have made it to another Monday here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Pick five starts out in race number four we're off the Exmark Morris turf course. It really only affects race number five. In race number four, no scratches, no changes. I think Anchorman could be a single on many people's tickets. A little bit cautious, though, that had been gelded. Sometimes they were actually gelded before they raced on October 10th. I'd be very surprised uh, if they were gelded after that race and are already back at the track. But ran a good race last time out. You're going to have to settle for much lower odds today than you did last time. Um, one, four, and nine for me. That is one thing that I would always express caution on, whether you're handicapping. If a horse went off at huge odds last time, do you really want to settle for much lower? That's going to be the question you have to answer with Anchor Man uh, in post position number one for a lightly raced two year old breaking from the inside. I think Scooter and a Big Man is a great name and could be in with a big shot and my little red vet for the Lowers. That's the horse with experience who was a beaten favorite last time. Betters may be jumping off. They look to jump back on in this spot. Much better post. Race number five, the off-turf event scratches are as follows. Two, four, five, nine, and 12. And when I was talking to Show about who I liked in this off-turf event, because I know that he does not like any uh, dirt in his hooves, we are going to go to the one horse who is entered to be on the dirt only, and that is Guana K, the main track only in here, Guana K. Esquivel approaching a milestone of 1,000 career wins, and he looks to get another one in here with the win happy Guanake, who 6 for 18, all six came on a fast main track, a perfect one for one here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. This will be the fourth different racetrack in the last four tries for Guanake. Ran in an event very similar to this earlier in July, off turf, went off as a favorite. And really dominated throughout. I do think Guana K is strictly the one to beat. 12 to 1 morning line. That should be very interesting to see if we get anywhere near 12 to 1 on the only main track, Guana K. Race number 6, 1, 3, and 6 for me. We're going to go Lieutenant Kitty along with Valsheba and Quick and Easy. Now, if you're following those DRF professional betters over at DRF, the handicappers there, Happen to love Velsheba in this spot. 4-1 to one, could be the controlling speed in here. 2 for 18, Joe Ramos aboard for Barbara McBride, who's winless on the season. We'll see if some crazy things can happen on Halloween and Barbara McBride get her first photo in here after starting the season 0 for 32, 0 for 36 on the year. She looks to change that around today. And myself, along with the DRF uh, handicappers, believe there is an excellent shot, but the long shot you want to include, whether it's pick four or pick five, is Joe Davis's quick and easy in this spot. 0 for 7 on the year, did have two wins last year. I think ran better than it looked last time out behind Velsheba, and that one's going to be overlooked in this spot. Race number seven, made in special weight in here. I think the late daily double from the thoroughbred portion is one of the more challenging doubles. Scratch numbers 12 and 13 out of this race. I'm going to go 2, 3, 6, and 8. No strong opinions in this race. The one thing I will add in, I've been against first-time starters late in the season. I've made it well known, first-time starters late in the season. Evil Intentions at 10 to 1 has a big shot in here. This is a two-year-old filly by neck and neck out of Corsica. Well, who's Corsica? It's the same dam as Mr. Chaos. Mr. Chaos just won a quarter of a million dollar race, not this year, just two days ago, on Saturday, a sibling, uh, Mr. Chaos, just brought home over a quarter of a million dollars, is now 8 for 10 in the exacta with over $360,000 in earnings, evil intention, a half sibling out of the same dam. I pay attention uh, to sharing the dams much more than I do the sires uh, for obvious reason. I think Law Dog Stables could have themselves a good one. There are certainly concerns about a January full debuting this late in the season, but the workouts have been consistent. you got to love the 5 for long workout, 10 to 1. Follow the money in race number 7. Race number 8, 12,000 uh, claimers going for their second career victory. Scratch number 3, spread. Spread, spread, spread. Uh, horses looking for their second career victory at the claiming level. Even show here, 
knows it's time to spread in this race. Your favorite down on the rail was the beaten favorite last time out. There's cause for concern. You talk about uh, backing a horse at a long shot price. Aneda ran great at 20 to 1. All the betters jumped on board. Was the beaten favorite last time out at 7 to 5. Back to back third place finishes. Hasn't really shown the ability to really dig down deep and open up at any point. This is a race that I want to be deep, whether it's that Empire Six, the pick five, or the pick four. Show and I are hopeful that we can be riding right in to the winner's circle. A eh? good boy, Show. We're about 17 minutes away from race number one. Thanks for joining us. Happy Halloween. Hopefully, you are enjoying it, and hopefully, your photo finishes will give you some more money to go out and buy some more candy. Good luck today. Overture, curtains, lights, this is it. We hit the heights and Owen Heights will hit. On with the show, this is it. We wish show good luck here today at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Happy Halloween. Brian Aragoni, part of our dream team that Eric Hallstrom put together this season. And uh, again, Rachel, uh, from the bottom of my heart and the entire Horseshoe Indianapolis team, thanks for making me, welcoming me to uh, Horseshoe we Indianapolis. We love you, John. Great to be, I'm an official. I, I, an official Hoosier. You, you know, are. So. You are an unofficial Hoosier. We have to give you some corn and do some things to get you uh, into being I'll an take official. I'll take, I'll take some yeah, we got to do like today, a corn you know? something. Like there's a whole like corn ceremony we have to get you to make you an official one. But for right now, you're definitely an unofficial Hoosier. Well, I've really enjoyed it this season from start to finish. I mean, Deshaun Parker's 6,000th career win here from uh, the Caesar Stakes, from the running of the Indiana Derby, Indiana Oaks. I'll remember that. And of course, uh, last weekend, weekend, Indiana Champions Day. Uh, it has just been uh, terrific from uh, start to my finish today. Call nine races on a sloppy track. And so until next time, for the entire team at Racing Rachel, I get to say it one more time and on Happy Halloween. We're done. Have, Have fun. fun. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. <laughs> over. Ray, come on over. Say hi to everybody. Come on, come on over, Ray. She's been come, dying come over, to come jump over, over here. Come right over here. Come in the middle. So until next time, for I all of us here at Horseshoe Indianapolis Ready? and the entire family, we're done. Have, Have fun. fun. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. Firm, rail at 36 feet, sunny and 90s. Until next time for our entire crew and Racing Rachel 2, track announcer John G. Dooley saying we're done. Have fun. Bye for now. Until next time for our entire crew and Racing Rachel, track announcer John G. Dooley saying we're done. Have fun. Bye for now. Next time for our entire crew, track announcer John G. Dooley and Martha Clausen saying we're done. Have fun. Good morning. Make it a great day. Bye for now. Until next time for our entire crew and Racing Rachel, track announcer John G. Dooley saying we're done. Have fun. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. Until next time for our entire crew and Brian Aragoni and Racing Rachel, track announcer John G. Dooley saying we're done. Have fun. Bye for now. Here with nine races on tap on a fast track until next time for Brian Aragoni, Racing Rachel, and our entire crew. Track announcer John G. Dooley saying, We're done. Have, Have fun. fun. Bye, Bye for now. now. For all of us here at Horseshoe Indianapolis and uh, our crew, track announcer John G. Dooley saying, I'm done. Have fun. Bye for now.
Good afternoon from Horseshoe Indianapolis. Hello now for the broadcast booth. Track announcer, John G. Dooley. Great to have you with us. Cloudy skies, sloppy main track. We're off the X-Mark Mowers turf course. All nine races today will be run over the main track sloppy. Let's take a look at the changes and corrections on today's racing program. Opening mid in sprint, no scratches. Number five, Cha-Cha Lowry, a change of rider to Rafael Mojica Jr. Rafael Mojica Jr. rides number five, Cha-Cha Larry. From the second race sprint, scratch the two Sacred Sky and three Mowins. No Superfecta bets. No Superfecta, scratch the two and number three. Race three starts off the 20 cent straight fire six. Jackpot, $1,333. No changes in the third. Race four, mid and juvenile sprint, starts at a 50 cent pick five. All nine run. No changes in the fourth race. Mid and juvenile sprint. Starts the pick five. Race five of today's nine is off the turf. This will be run over the main track at a mile and a sixteenth. Scratch the two. Taken to the cleaners. Four, Cherokee Song. Scratch five, perhaps tonight. The nine, Covenant Lady. And scratch the ten, Timeless Rose. Twelve, Guana Key entered as a main track only by Cipriano Contreras. Will run. Guana Key, the 12 runs, scratch the 2, 4, 5, 9, and number 10. Number 1, there are no rules. The rider, Marcelino Pedroza Jr., meets leading jockey, three-time champion, Marcelino Pedroza Jr. on 1. There are no rules. Number 11, Habuya, 1 pound over. In the 6th race, number 5, Clever Kate, has been scratched. Scratch number five, Clever Kate. Seventh race, a maiden juvenile Philly sprint. Scratch the 12, Unbridled Talent, and 13, by Car Betty. Scratch the 12, and number 13. Race eight, scratch three, New Year's Delight. Number three, New Year's Delight, has been scratched. Ninth and final, Quarter Horse Maiden Dash over the 400 yards, Sloppy Track Headwind. There are no scratches. To Princess Beach, a jockey change to Jose Ruiz. Weight's correct. Jose Ruiz rides one, Princess Beach. Overweights, the five, six is taken cash, plus four. Six, Escondido Warrior, three over. Eight, Sena B first, plus two pounds. Number nine, Jet into Midnight, add five pounds to the weight. Again, no scratches. One, Stony Beach, owner correction, should read Debbie Smith. Debbie Smith owns the one, Stony Beach. Juan Marquez for quarter horse beat leader Randy Smith. Debbie Smith owns the nine race maiden, the one Stony Beach. There are a look at the changes and corrections on today's racing program. Sloppy track will have the maiden sprint opener do off at the bottom of the hour. Make it a great day with us here and happy Halloween from Horseshoe Indianapolis.
the horses call postward for the opening maiden sprint over the six furlong sloppy tracky field of six. No scratches. Number five, Cha Cha Lowry has noted a change of rider to Rafael Mojica Jr. Five race maiden, Rafael Mojica Jr. will ride number five, Cha Cha Lowry. Race one features exacta trifecta superfecta. Here we start our rolling doubles, pick threes in the early pick four on a sloppy track. Four minutes to post time. Four minutes. We're now less than one minute away from post time. Opening minute sprint starts at the 50 cent early pick four. Sloppy track at the bottom of the hour. Race one, do up.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. They're going in. Joshua Morales with Looking Salty. Now Sammy Bermudez. Bumpy coming up in the maroon silks. At six furlongs <laughs> loading up. Rodney Prescott with Student Prince Drew three. Cha-Cha Larry, six to five, it's the first favorite. Now Joe Ramos with One Way Ray. Two back, Rafael Mojica Jr. with Cha Cha Larry. Loads and even money for him. One more, Orlando Mojica with just a note. Coming up. All nine races today on the main track. Main track sloppy, first of the day, they're in the gate. Wayne running at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Fast start for Looking Salty, who fires right out for Josh Morales. Looking Salty just leads here in the early stages from a pressing bumpy in between horses with on the outside One Way Ray and farther out is Cha Cha Larry. But Bumpy went to the front here for Samir Bermudez. Bumpy leads past the half mile pole by a half to three quarters. Two between horses. One Way Ray, who launches a bid now as they head toward the far turn. Cha Cha Larry is just off them in third. Sharp starting, looking salty, sprinted back on a sloppy track, joined on the outside by Justin Ocean, who's running second to last. And Student Prince trails the maiden sextet here in the Monday opener. The quarter was 22.69 seconds. These leaders coming past the quarter pole. On the outside, One Way Ray and Bumpy toward the rail. They're head to head. Half mile in 46.08 seconds. They splash for home. One Way Ray has gained the advantage. It's One Way Ray, who's now slipping away from Bumpy past the eighth pole. Cha Cha Larry looks to be a one pace third on an off track. Then Justin Ocean fourth. They're close to home. It's One Way Ray, Joe Ramos for Tiana Richardville. One Way Ray, one going away by 10. Bumpy was second, Cha Cha Larry third. Just an ocean finish fourth. Four, two, five, six. Unofficial first results in four. One way Ray at six to five first. Two bumpy. Three to one on the place horse. Five Cha Cha Larry. Six to five. Joint favorite was third. And six just a notion. Twenty five to one on the fourth. Hold all bets until official on the sloppy track. One eleven point eighty one. One way Ray. Joe Ramos for Tiana Richardville. Third time was the charm for the son of Skylord. One way Ray at six to five takes out the maiden sprint in the slop.
Returning to the winner's circle, number four. Race one official, One Way Ray with Joe Ramos. One Way Ray is a three-year-old chestnut gelding by Skylord. Out of Ideal House by Limehouse. Brennan, Indiana by Ty Biggs. Racing for Red Shed, Thoroughbred LLC. And B&B Stables, LLC. Trained by Tiana Richardville. Horseshoe Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections of One Way Ray. Takes out the maiden sprint, 111.81. First results in. 4-2 exact to paid $16.80. 50 cent trifecta, 425, $6.90. With just a notion fourth, the 10 cent superfecta, 4256, paid $4.78. One way Ray was a joint 6 to 5 favorite with Cha Cha Lowry. All six ran, sloppy track, 111.81. Race two of nine today from the next sprint. Scratch two sacred sky and three Mowins. No superfecta bets. No superfecta. Scratch the two and number three. Race two features exacta, trifecta, double pick three, sloppy track. Post time for the second race sprint will be in 19 minutes at 2.58. In all cases, please make your selections and Horseshoe Indianapolis wagers early. Thank you. Coming up in just a moment will be our first replay of the day. Hope you had a bet on One Way Ray. in the gate. Away and running at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Fast start for Looking Salty who fires right out for Josh Morales. Looking Salty just leads here in the early stages from a pressing bumpy in between horses with on the outside one way Ray and farther out is Cha Cha Larry. But Bumpy went to the front here for Samir Bermudez. Bumpy leads past the half mile pole by a half to three quarters. Two between horses. One Way Ray who launches a bid now as they head toward the far turn. Cha Cha Larry is just off them in third. Sharp starting looking salty. Sprinted back on a sloppy track. Joined on the outside by Justin Ocean who's running second to last. And Student Prince trails the maiden sextet here in the Monday opener. The quarter was 22.69 seconds. These leaders coming past the quarter pole. On the outside, One Way Ray and Bumpy toward the rail. They're head to head. Half mile in 46.08 seconds. They splash for home. One Way Ray has gained the advantage. It's One Way Ray who's now slipping away from Bumpy past the eighth pole. Cha Cha Larry looks to be a one pace third on an off track. Then just an ocean fourth. They're close to home. It's One Way Ray. Joe Ramos for Tiana Richardville. One Way Ray. One going away by 10. Bumpy was second. Cha Cha Larry third. Just an ocean finish fourth.
Just 10 minutes away from race number two, a sloppy and off turf course for Halloween here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Uh, nine of them, Carter, were already on race number two. We are underway for the final day of John G. Dooley calling the races here at Horseshoe Indianapolis as he brings his talents to the fairgrounds this winter. Scratch numbers two and three in here. Moens comes out, Sacred Sky, two horses that look like they wanted to go further. They scratch out, will likely come back in a route race. Uh, the question mark in here is, is Chip off the old block, ready to roll off of a layoff? When last seen August 18th, it seemed like he was a little bit off form. Based on the early money and the indications, Chip off the old block may need one before getting back to his best form. We'll see if the Indiana bred takes his talents over to Hot Springs, Arkansas. I do think this race goes through. Nobody listens on the cutback. A perfect 5-for-5 five five in the exacta on an off track. Really ran willingly last time out. Was bet down to the 2-1 to one favorite in a 10-horse field. Now, this was the $200,000 too-much coffee stakes. Joe Ramos was aboard that day for Michelle Lavelle. Uh, ran a good second behind Max Express. Uh, beat Mullins home that day by a length. Set some fast fractions. I mean, when you're going sub 48 and 112 going a route race on this surface, you're going pretty quick. And quick they went. Um, was well clear your third place finisher, who was also well clear of the rest of the field. It was a strung out field that day. I thought nobody listens. Did all the heavy lifting. Didn't really have much kick at the end, but had excuses behind Max Express, who had been in good form and loves the distance. This is an Indiana bred who loves it here locally. 11 for 13 in the exact. It cuts back, has early speed, has experience on a sloppy track, and good experience at that. I thought earlier this year in May, I mean, they were very game on the front end, but they did lose the chip off the old block. 1 to 2 versus 5 to 1. That's the big uh, decision whether chip off the old block is ready to go at first. Asking, I believe he will need a race. The good looking gray. The one to catch to cash, and my grandma always said, bet a gray on a rainy day. And if you believe in that, then one to two, nobody listens, is your horse. But a value player in here is Flower Pecker for Cipriano Contreras. Esquivel aboard as Contreras owns and trains. Flower Pecker has been his game as they come. Now this is a horse who, when I looked at how many wins he had this year, I was very surprised. One for seven. It certainly feels like he has run good enough to win multiple races. I was expecting to see much more than that in the winner's circle column. Then I dove uh, a little bit deeper, lost by a neck, lost by another photo finish behind a few too many. He runs his race every time. He's battled throughout gamely in each and every start. Now, he doesn't necessarily want to go two turns, uh, which he did last time on the Too Much Coffee. He kind of had a troubled beginning. He was checked in, in tightly out of the gate, and it was all done at the top of the lane. Gets back to what he likes best. That is sprinting on the main track. I think Flower Pecker is being overlooked in this spot. 7-1, a great value player in here for a horse who has certainly run much better than his wins would show on the year. It's Flower Pecker, and it's 7-1. Plenty of value in this spot. Number six is Shandana. And very similar to Chip Off the Old Block. Is Chip Off the Old Block ready to go? Can Shandana duplicate what they did just a few days ago on October 9th, uh, three weeks ago, almost uh, over at Keeneland? I remember the race very well. Shandana stayed on. It was a long drive, but Chase Gamely throughout, losing to Center Isle by only a head. They got a great trip that day under Florent Drew, kind of rolled the rail into a good spot just behind dueling leaders. They went past right at the wire. This is Indiana bred who took on some salty foes over at Keeneland. Ran great. Can he do, or can she duplicate that performance is the big question mark in here. A filly against the boys uh, is likely why you're getting a, uh, an overlay at this point. The filly took on open company last time out. Now she comes back in. She gets in with state breads, but also tries the boys. And this is not your average group of uh, Colts and Geldings in this spot. They are no slouches by any means. We'll see. If the filly can show the boys how it's done. She ran excellent over at Keeneland. We'll see if she can duplicate that performance on a little shorter rest today. Prescott going to be calling the shots for Bob Dobbs. Looking to push those career earnings over a quarter of a million dollars. But I think the good looking gray in Nobody Listens, the one to catch to cash. We'll see if anyone listens. That's up to you as we're five minutes away from race number two. Good luck.
The horses call postward for the second race. It's our sprint feature of the day over the six furlongs in field of five. Scratch two, Sacred Sky, and three Moens. No Superfecta bets. No Superfecta. Scratch the two and number three. Exacta, trifecta, double pick three, sloppy track. Three minutes to post time. Three minutes. One minute away from post time. One minute.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. Arriving at the gate, it is now post time. Loading Edgar Morales with chip off the all block. Three to five on, nobody listens. Chip off the old block first in. Now nobody listens, Joe Ramos riding for the opening double. One way Ray won the maiden opener in 111.81. Sloppy track, we're loading up. Manny Esquivel with Flower Pecker. Now Roddy Prescott with Shandana. One more. Fernando Leather Cruz with Stop Hammer Time. Second of the day here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Sprint feature. And the gate. And they're off. Nobody listens. Broke sharp. Real sharp there for Joe Ramos. Just leads Flower Pecker for the run up the back of the track with Shandana showing positional pace in third. Then toward the inside is Chip off the old block and Stop Hammer Time. Trails the quintet. It's Nobody Listens, the great front runner. Nobody Listens out in front to Flower Pecker by a length and a half, a break of three to Chip off the old block who's just gained third. Shandana fourth on the far outside and Stop Hammer Time now testing those inside waters. The quarter for Nobody Listens, 21.69 seconds. Nobody Listens leads to three for longs from home. Chased by Flower Pecker, Chip off the old block is in third. Shandana on the far outside. Bearing out there for Rodney Prescott. Stop hammer time with the rail. Six thanks off this leader. Nobody listens. Spins them in. Half mile in 44.34. Nobody listens. Carries a three length lead into the final furlong from Flower Pecker in full stretch. Stop hammer time. Running on with the rail. Then chip off the old block. The distant is Shandana. They're close to home. And everybody bet. Nobody listens. At two to five. Nobody listens, one by two and a half from Stop Hammer Time. Flower Pecker lost place late, then chip off the old block, and Chandana was last to the five and And one minute, 9.99 seconds, 4751. Sprint feature of the day, number four, nobody listens. At two to five, had all the money on. Seven, stop hammer time. 19 to one on the place horse. Five, flower pecker. 10 to one third, and one chip off the old block. Five to one the fourth. There was no super factor wagering. It's four, seven, five in the one. Six, Shandana, fifth. Joe Ramos takes out the opening double here for Michelle Lovell. Matt Kwiatkowski, Jason Kaler, and Roger D. Browning. Nobody listens. They did at 2 to 5.
returning to the winner's circle, V4. Nobody listens. Joe Ramos making quick work of the double. Nobody listens is a four-year-old gelded son of conveyance out of the Chapel Royal Mare, Royalesque, bred in Indiana by Southern Chase Farm Incorporated, Karen Dodd and Greg Dodd, his Indiana breeders. Michelle Bubble trains for the ownership of Matt Kwiatkowski, Jason Kaler, and Roger D. Browning. Horse Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections. He was two to five. Nobody listens. Wins our sprint of the day in 109.99. The result of the second race official. The 4-7 exacta paid $18.80. 50 cent trifecta, 475, $16.60. And Joe Ramos swept the opening double with one way ray and nobody listens for $7.80. And our sprint of the day, two and three were non runners. Favorite first, five faced the starter. Woman at 9.99, sloppy track. We go to the third. Next sprint, no changes, all eight run. No changes in the third race sprint. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta. Double pick three. 20 cent straight fire six jackpot stands at $1,333. Straight fire six jackpot rolled over from the Indiana Champions Day card, $1,333. All races on a sloppy main track. Race three scheduled in 18 minutes, off at 327. And they're off. Nobody listens. Broke sharp. Real sharp there for Joe Ramos. Just leads Flower Pecker with a run up the back of the track with Shandana showing positional pace in third. Then toward the inside is chip off the old block and stop hammer time. Trails the quintet. It's Nobody Listens. The great front runner. Nobody listens. Out in front to Flower Pecker by a length and a half. A break of three to chip off the old block who's just gained third. Shandana fourth on the far outside. And Stop Hammer Time now testing those inside waters. The quarter for Nobody Listens. 21.69 seconds. Nobody Listens leads to three for longs from home. Chased by Flower Pecker. Chip off the old block is in third. Shandana on the far outside. Bearing out there for Roddy Prescott. Stop Hammer Time with the rail. Six thanks off this leader. Nobody Listens. Spins them in. Half mile in 44.34. Nobody listens. Carries a three length lead into the final furlong from Flower Pecker in full stretch. Stop hammer time. Running on with the rail. Then chip off the old block. The distant is Shandana. They're close to home. And everybody bet. Nobody listens. At two to five. Nobody listens. One by two and a half from Stop Hammer Time. Flower Pecker lost place late. Then chip off the old block. And Shandana was last to the final.
10 minutes to race three here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. My favorite holiday. I like Halloween better than Christmas. And I love when my AV guys support my obsession. Oh crap, I forgot I'm backwards. La la la. Oh look, there's my arm. Oh look, a little Halloween magic. I'm handless. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, three year old and up claiming for 10,000 here. This does start the straight fire uh, pick six. I'm gonna go three, six, four, and 10 on top. This one was 12 to one and with no scratches, I thought I was gonna get much better, but it's been bet down to four to one here. At least I'm not, I don't have the favorite, but after I've, bet, I've handicapped this, who knows what's gonna happen. Uh, the connections, Michelle Elliott, Marcelino Pedroza, um, very, very good connections. This is a five-year-old gelding who, if you look at these past performances, a couple back, August 23rd, a nice win. Now, granted, that was claiming for five. She came back and was third in that race. Granted, it was, um, you know, by five lengths, but she was still a very nice third, kind of best of the rest situation, claiming for 12-5. That's even higher class than she's in today. And I think that she is going to, he is going to love the slop. <clears throat> this one broke maiden on May 26th this year um, at five furlongs in the slop and won it very, very nicely. The third place finisher in that race came back to win. Um, so I think that this one's a mutter and I'm rooting for Chili and Michelle here. Then I'm gonna go to the six. This one's nine to one, which kind of shocked me. I thought it was gonna be a light more, that was gonna be the odds of my three. Six Prince Act, Fernando De La Cruz, not getting as much action as I thought. Kim Hammond is the trainer of this four year old um, gelding this one's coming in the same uh class so last time i was in claiming 10 non three is in claiming 10 non three today was a second just kind of tracked them in that race kind of stalked the pace and just stayed sort of in that position um this one has ran on an off track before but doesn't have any in the minute mini money finishes so that's a question mark for me and then the four complex justice is the two to one favorite right now you know, the Justice Brads, you got to give them the respect that they deserve. They're very nice horses. 
Gage Holmes is up for John Horan. Gage has been on fire. I had a couple people mention that to me when I was downstairs last week. I mean, Gage is just, she is riding really, really well. She was up last time when this horse got second. Uh, just missed in there. And is going down to five and a half. Has been close at five and a half before as well. I mean, this horse has been in the money plenty of times in his career. Um, especially this year in 2022. I mean, he's six of eight. So definitely in form uh, this year for the four complex justice. So I see why why he's a favorite. But I like the three on top. Three, six, four for me here on Halloween as we start a spooky pick six. Get your tickets in, ladies and gentlemen. It's a jackpot wager. Oh, no. The horses stepping onto the track for race three. The next sprint at five and a half furlongs. Sloppy track. A field of eight. No program changes in the third. All eight run. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta. Double pick three. 20 cent straight fire six jackpot. $1,333. The straight fire six. Racing on a sloppy track today. All races on the main track. Again, sloppy. Scheduled at 327. That's now three minutes away. Three minutes to get a bet on.
We're less than one minute away from post time. Sprint starts off the 20 cent straight fire six, jackpot $1,333. Sloppy track, race three, we will soon. The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. First up, in tend, leading jockey Marcelino Pedroza Jr. with 92 wins here this season. The Air Horse One drone view. Sloppy track. Leading up ferocity. Joe Ramos swept the opening double. One way ring and nobody listens, our first two winners. Ferocity has joined in hand. Fernando de la Cruz with Prince Andrew six. Rogelio Miranda, Thing has the rail draw. Now to Sean Parker with Day in the Country in the Black Silks. Rick Romero with Mr. Man coming up. Complex Justice, Gage Holmes claims the five pound apprentice allowance. Stand by at five and a half furlongs, sloppy track, one more. Samir Bermudez with Elvis, just Elvis. All in line. The Robin sprinting.
And there's Intend who rockets out toward the front for Marcelino Pedroza Jr. Intend beats them to the punch in pursuit. Thing with the rail, day in the country in between horses. Prince Axe strides up on the far outside to join the pursuit with Complex Justice in the purple silks as they go past the half mile pole. Then comes Ferocity, followed out wide by Elvis, just Elvis, who's looking to gain, and Mr. Man has drifted back to eighth. The quarter was 22.27 seconds in 10. Just leads Prince Act here over a sloppy track inside three furlongs to go. Prince Act now launching a bid up to in 10 with complex justice in the three path. Elvis, just Elvis, looks to gain on the far outside. Ferocity in between horses, then toward the rail day in the country. We draw back to Mr. Man and with the rail thing. They've strained away half in 45.82. It's in 10. In 10 is game and battles toward the inside. Prince Act is now second, then toward the inside, Day in the Country. Far outside is Complex Justice, who's gaining late. It's Intend. Here's Complex Justice on the outside, getting up Complex Justice, as Intend was denied. Prince Act, Ferocity, and Day in the Country. It was Complex Justice and Gage Holmes getting up in the nick, nick of time. One oh five point thirty five four three six the two fourth after a photo. Four complex justice at seven to five up in time. Three and ten at five to one pipped at the post. Six Prince Act, five to one third and two day in the country gets into the superfecta. Thirty nine to one, the fourth horse in the frame. It's four three six two. Hold all bets until official. Favorite gets it done. Complex Justice, Gage Holmes for John Harrod. It was Complex Justice in the final strides. Returning to the winner's circle, the four, Complex Justice with Gage Holmes. Complex Justice is a five-year-old bay gelding by Animal Style. Out of Prairie Flower by Flower Alley. Bred here in Indiana by Justice Farm, Greg Justice. Racing for Mike Ryans, Clubber Moore, Stable LLC, and Harlan Thoroughbreds LLC of John Harlan. Horseshoe Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections of Complex Justice. A 7-5 to five favorite got up in time. 105.35-4362, the run order. Race three official. The four three exacta paid thirty one dollars and twenty cents. Fifty cent trifecta four three six twenty four dollars thirty cents. The first pick three on the card sloppy track returned six dollars and thirty five cents. The four four double seven dollars eighty cents and the ten cent superfecta with day in the country fourth returned sixty three dollars thirty five cents. And the sprint favorite was first. All they ran, 105.35 after the running of race three. In the fourth race, made in juvenile sprint, there are no changes. All nine run. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta, 10-cent pentafecta bets, double pick three, pick five carry over 
Fourth race post time will be in 19 minutes at 3.56. All races on the main track. Main track, sloppy. Robin sprinting. And there's Intan who rockets out toward the front for Marcelino Pedroza Jr. Intan beats them to the punch in pursuit. Thing with the rail, day in the country in between horses. Prince Axe strides up on the far outside to join the pursuit with Complex Justice in the purple silks as they go past the half mile pole. Then comes Ferocity, followed out by, by Elvis, just Elvis, who's looking to gain. And Mr. Man has drifted back to eighth. The quarter was 22.27 seconds in 10. Just leads Prince Act here over a sloppy track inside three furlongs to go. Prince Act now launching a bid up to in 10 with complex justice in the three path. Elvis, just Elvis, looks to gain on the far outside. Ferocity in between horses, then toward the rail day in the country. We trail back to Mr. Man and with the rail thing. They've strained away half in 45.82. It's in 10. In 10 is game and battles toward the inside. Prince Act is now second. Then toward the inside, day in the country. Far outside is Complex Justice, who's gaining late. It's in 10. Here's Complex Justice on the outside, getting up Complex Justice. As in 10 was denied. Denied. Prince Act for
Feel the excitement with TwinSpires.com, the official betting partner of the Kentucky Derby and Breeders' Cup. With TwinSpires.com, place legal wagers and watch live horse racing wherever you are on any device. Sign up, play, and win today. New players use promo code FREE100 on sign up to start your $100 bonus. With TwinSpires.com, you can bet on horse racing. Get the TwinSpires.com app to receive special offers and the most up-to-date information. Terms and conditions apply. Void where prohibited. Please wager responsibly. Pick five time, race number four coming up, coming at you just nine minutes away. We're off the Exmark Morris Turf Course, so certainly adjust those pick five tickets. It only affects one race. Race number five going to be off the Exmark Morris Turf Course. Uh, no scratches, no changes to be announced in race number four. Five and a half furlongs going to be the distance on a sloppy main track in here. I'm going to use my top three selections. It's going to be a theme throughout my pick five. No, I didn't get lazy. I just didn't think many of the races you had to go very deep in this pick five i'm going to kick it off uh with the top selection and anchor man lascano gets the call in here uh for caratoy who went off at 23 to 1 last time out here at horseshoe indianapolis lost a friday night right i thought ran a good race in fact ranged up at the top of the lane couldn't go with the well-backed favorite who did get the job done that day as a heavily backed favorite at that and actually went on to take on winners for the first time and also one next race. We'll see if this two-year-old gray by anchor down uh, can make the point. Dexters and Mrs. Toy very proud in here. Currently much lower than they were on debut. Did run too good to lose on that debut. October 10th comes back on a little bit of a, a shorter rest uh, than three or three weeks or so for the two-year-old. We'll see how they handle that. But breaking down from the inside, we haven't seen too many horses Riding the rail with success so far today with the sloppy main track. We'll see if they can change that. Right now is your current second choice at 5-2. to two, And they are the second choice because Scooter and a big man is taking all the action in your 3-1 to one morning line. Currently 9-5 to five for John Langmar and Marcelino Pedroza Jr. in this spot. They'll take the blinkers off. The blinkers going to come off in here. It's an uh, angle that John Langmar has used with success in the past. He wins at 33% when he takes the blinkers off. Now, so far on the year, he's been winless with two-year-olds. That's something that he is looking uh, to change up today. This is a horse who's heavily backed on debut. It was a field of 10. It was bet down to the 5-2 to two second choice that day and showed good early speed. 
Didn't have much left, though, when the real running started. That was going six furlongs. They'll cut back today. They look to be the controlling pace in here. And so far, horses on the lead or near the lead have done very well. We'll see if Scooter and the big man can get the job done in here. A two-year-old son of more spirit, 5-2 to two on the board. But my little red vet is most favorably drawn in here for the Lowers. Edgar Morales is going to be calling the shots. As Mike Lauer trains, Penny Lauer and Mike Lauer both own and bred this son of Jimmy Creed, who's bred to win and win early. We've seen horses by Jimmy Creed uh, have success early on in their careers, usually have no issue breaking from the gate and uh, being very alertly away. A uh, horse who ran here on October 10th was the beaten favorite that day. In fact, exits the same race as Scooter and a big man, um, My Little Red Vet, Went off as the favorite, and neither of the top two ran all that great. I mean, my little red vet didn't have any excuses whatsoever. Looks like the betters aren't diving back in again today. Five to one right now. Your clear third choice. It looks like the wagering is really hammering in on these top three selections. One, four, and nine. Not giving many other horses a chance in this spot. But Edgar Morales, Mike Lauer, uh, looking for another winner in here. I haven't seen Morales riding a ton of two-year-olds, so certainly um, make note of that as well. We'll see if the slop can provide us a huge price in this first leg of the 50-cent pick five. It's a challenging sequence in here. You've got two-year-olds kicking us off in race number four. The off-turf event, we are going to go just the 12 in the off-turf event. Going to only use the main track only. Guana K. Esquivel for Cipriano Contreras, who owns and trains. A perfect one-for-one one here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. And a six-time winner on the main track. And then Guana K. has some back class that some of the others are not going to be able to match. So we will single in the lone off-turf event. We'll go on the allowance route race uh, for three-year-old fillies and up state bred. Um, looking for their third career victory in race number six. I'm going to go one, three, and six in there. Lieutenant Kitty. The horse to beat, no doubt about it, but doesn't have a running style that's very conducive to winning in small fields or on a wet track. We'll see how Lieutenant Kitty fares today. Race number seven and eight, I think these are great betting races. Save the best for last in uh, both race number seven, the maiden special weight, and race number eight. Uh, we'll head out to the main track for a six furlong sprint. Those races look wide open. Looks like a pick five sequence that you may be able to go a little bit lighter early on. And then you certainly want to be deep and feel as comfortable as you can with as many horses as you can in races 7 and 8. As the 2-year-olds set to go out to the track, a field of 9 will navigate the distance today. One of them will return a maiden no more as John G. Dooley set to give you his final pick 5 of the year here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Certainly always wishing him the best of luck as we are 5 minutes away. The riders... Getting the leg up, we are sloppy and headed out to the main track for race number four. The horses coming onto the track now for the fourth race. The Spade and Juvenile Sprint over the five and a half furlongs, a field of nine. No program changes, all nine run. 
Exacta Trifecta Superfecta, Double Pick Three, Ten Cent Pentafecta Wagers. That's the Grand High Five and starts at the 50 Cent Pick Five, 11.99% takeout. Racing analyst Brian Aragoni offering his thoughts and analysis on this mid and juvenile sprint over the five and a half for a long sloppy track. Cheers B, three minutes to post time. All nine run, three minutes. One minute to post time. Sloppy track starts at the 50 cent pick five at hand. Scheduled at 3.56. You have less than one minute.
Late scratch number eight, My Baby Grand. By order of the stewards, upon recommendation of the track veterinarian, number eight, My Baby Grand, has now been ordered scratched from the mid and juvenile sprint. All wagers here on eight, My Baby Grand refunds. There will be a four and eight consolation double. Four, eight consolation double. All wagers on eight, My Baby Grand, in a multi race wager. You'll now receive the post time favorite as your substitute in any multi race wagers on eight, My Baby Grand. Scratch now from the maiden juvenile sprint, the eights and non runner. The horses are approaching the starting gate. Sloppy track starts at the pick five. Nearing the five and a half for a long start. The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. At five and a half for longs, loading. Abel Escano with Anchorman coming up. Anchorman's in. Josh Morales with Vicious Rumor. Now Fernando Leva Cruz crossing the road, drew two. Went in okay, crossing the road. Comes imploding. Joe Ramos swept the opening double. Kendall Starrett with Dream Traveler. Anchorman now the four to five favorite over the five and a half furlongs. Anchorman is odds on four to five. Marcelino Pedroza Jr. with Scooter and the Big Man. Now Santo Sanjor with Amelia's Macho. Green purple diamond belt. At five and a half furlongs standby. One more. Edgar Morales and three times started My Little Red Vet. Sloppy track. Good luck if you have a pick five bet on. All in line. And they're off. And there goes Scooter and the Big Man. It was an even start. Scooter and the Big Man strikes out with on the far outside My Little Red Vet. Imploding starts a bid toward the inside now to vie for the lead with Scooter and the Big Man, who's out in front of Imploding with My Little Red Vet third close up at the three and a half. Toward the rail is Anchorman in fourth, Vicious Rumor in fifth as they enter the far turn. And on the far outside, Amelia's Macho looks to gain. The quarter was 22.64 seconds. Scooter into Big Man leads three quarters length to My Little Red Vet with on the outside. Amelia's Macho now running in third from in between horses. Anchorman up into fourth, imploding Flash B, but has dropped back. Then Vicious Rumor on the far outside, Dream Traveler and Finally, crossing the road is last in the maiden juvenile sprint. They come down toward the final furlong. Half in 46.42, Scooter into Big Man. Leads by Little Red Vet, who's trying to get up here to Scooter into Big Man, who continues to hold on to this advantage close to home for Marcelino Pedroza Jr. Scooter into Big Man at second asking. Scooter into Big Man, bounce home by three. My Little Red Vet was second, Anchorman third, and then fourth photo a nose between Amelia's Macho and Vicious Rumor held the rail. Four, nine, one, and then a show, uh, photo for fourth. That to seven, Amelia's Macho. Four, nine, one, seven, and the five, fifth. After the maiden juvenile sprint, 105.27, number four. Scooter into Big Man. Nine to five first. 
Number nine, My Little Red Vet. Three to one on the place horse. One, Anchorman. Four to five, favorite third. After a photo, four. Fourth, the seven, Amelia's Bacho. That at 43 to one. And the five, Vicious Rumor, was fifth for the Pentafecta. Four, nine, one. The seven at 43 to one odds, fourth. And Vicious Rumor for the Grand Hot Five. Hold all bets until official. Marcelino Pedroza, Jr., meet leader for John Langemeyer. Spooky Hollow Racing with a Halloween win. Scooter into Big Man in 105.27. The result of the fourth race official, 4-9-1-7. The five ran fifth for the Grand High Five official. 93rd win of the season here for leaving jockey Marcelino Pedroza Jr. On four, Scooter and a big man. Scooter and a big man is a two-year-old Dark Bay of Brown Colt by More Spirit. Out of Errant Angel by Tis Wonderful. Brennan, Indiana by Spooky Hollow Racing Incorporated of John Langemeyer. Porsche Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections of Scooter and the Big Man. Takes out the maiden juvenile sprint, 105.27. 4.9 exact to pay 22.80. 50 cent trifecta, 491, $7.90. 4 4 double, 16.60. 50 cent early pick four, $25.45. Amelia's Macho ran fourth. 10 cent superfecta, 4917, paid $9.53. It was a four and eight consolation double. That for 460 after a late scratch on eight. My Baby Grand. Eight, My Baby Grand was scratched from the maiden juvenile sprint. Pick three paid $7.60 and the 10 cent pentafecta, $34.18 with Vicious Rumor fifth. In that maiden juvenile sprint, the eight was a non runner. Refunds and a consolation double. Favorite third, eight ran. Sloppy track 105.27. Race five off the turf. Goes on the main track at a mile and a 16th. Scratch the two, taken to the cleaners. Four, Cherokee Song. Five, perhaps, tonight. Scratch the nine, Covenant Lady, and ten, Timeless Rose. Eleven, Guana Key entered as a main track only runs. Track sloppy. Guana Key, the 12 runs. Scratch the two, four, five. Nine and number 10, all have been scratched. One, there are no rules. The jockey, Marcelino Pedroza Jr., will ride for a double on a sloppy track. Marcelino Pedroza Jr. on number one. There are no rules. Eleven Habuya, one pound over. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta, double pick three, starts at a late pick four, sloppy track. Two off at a mile and a sixteenth in 18 minutes at 425. Tuesday post time, 2.30. And they're off. And there goes Scooter and a big man. It was an even start. Scooter and a big man strikes out with on the far outside, my little red vet. Imploding starts a bid toward the inside now to vie for the lead with Scooter and a big man, who's out in front of imploding with my little red vet third close up at the three and a half. Toward the rail is Anchorman in fourth, Vicious Rumor in fifth as they enter the far turn. And on the far outside, Amelia's Macho looks to gain. The quarter was 22.64 seconds. Scooter into Big Man leads three quarters length to My Little Red Vet with on the outside, Amelia's Macho now running in third from in between horses. Anchorman up into fourth, imploding Flash B, but has dropped back. Then Vicious Rumor on the far outside, Dream Traveler and 
finally crossing the road is last in the maiden juvenile sprint. They come down toward the final furlong, half in 46.42, Scooter into Big Man, leads by Little Red Vet, who's trying to get up here to Scooter into Big Man, who continues to hold on to this advantage close to home for Marcelino Pedroza Jr. Scooter into Big Man at second asking, Scooter into Big Man, bounce home by three. My Little Red Vet was second, Anchorman third, and then fourth photo, a nose between Amelia's Macho and Vic
Race five here at Horseshoe Indianapolis is an allowance optional claiming for 40000 and they were going a mile and a 16th on the grass. It's been scratched down. There's seven betting interests left. The two, four, nine, and ten are out. Marcelino is on the one. I'm going to go with the MTO here. I'm not really sure um, about Habuya being right on the inside, but I really like the 12 who drew in Guanake. I think there's a little bit of MTO luck here. I think outside of this shorter field, it's going to benefit uh, her. Also has been racing against a lot tougher at Keeneland and Churchill. And if you look back to this one's last win, it was at this class in the same situation it came off the turf. Um, and it was at this distance one by two and a half last time that she was here. So I think this is um, a very nice filly who also, on top of all those pluses, does have a second on the off going. And then I am going to move to the inside of the 12 to the 11, Habuya. Edgar Morales has a board for Jan John Langemeyer. This three-year-old filly by Jimmy Creed is making her 10th lifetime start. She is so, so talented. Um, out of nine starts, she's eight in the money. Uh, she likes this class. She competes well at it. However, it's turf that she likes. <clears throat> she does have a third and off track. I don't think that she's going to like it as much as my top uh, selection, Guanake, does. And then I'm going to go to the six, Polka Polenta. Orlando Mojica is aboard for Joe Davis. This is a four-year-old filly who's making her 20th lifetime start. She's done the winner's circle five times. She's in second a couple of times, a nice third. She's been competing really nicely here um, in Indiana, but this is another one that the last few very nice race, last couple very nice races have been um, on turf. She's not ran on a wet dirt. I'm not really sure how she'll like it. She could love it. Um, she has shown some form on Polly. Um, she she might, but Poco Polenta, I think, um, is the one that rounds out my trifecta uh, really nicely. Her running style as well. She likes to be on or near the lead. Should benefit her. 12, 11, 6 for me here in the fifth race. This does start the late 50 cent. Pick four. Good luck.
The horses call postward now for the fifth race. This transferred off the turf to do a sloppy main track, a field of seven. Over the mile and a 16. Scratch two taken to the cleaners. Four Cherokee song. Five perhaps tonight. Nine Covenant Lady has been withdrawn. And scratch ten timeless rose. Scratch the two, four, five, nine in number ten. One, there are no rules. The rider Marcelino Pedroso Jr. Marcelino Pedroso Jr. on one. There are no rules. Number 11, Habuya, pound over. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta, double pick three, and starts at the late pick four, sloppy track, scheduled at 425. One minute to post time. You have round about one minute. The horses are approaching the starting gate. Sloppy track going down to the mile and a 16th start.
The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. There are no rules. Marcelino Pedroza Jr. riding for a double. Samir Bermudez, Wellington Wonder coming up. Jesus Castanon with Kimberly Dream. Green, lime sleeves. Over the mile and a 16th, we're loading up. Orlando Mexico with Polka Polenta. Sean Parker, treasure of war, went it well. Edgar Morales with Tabuya. One more, Manny Esquivel with Wanaki, runs as a main track only. Sloppy here at Horseshoe, Indianapolis. Here comes the fifth in the gate. And they're off. Kimberly Dream hopped in the air at the start, drifts back toward last. Polka Polenta broke sharply. Habuya gets position, and Guanaki strides up in the three path as they splash into the first turn. It's Polka Polenta vying for the lead with Habuya. There are no rules right there at that off track rail. Wellington Wonder in tight quarters, fourth between horses, kept in by Guanaki, who strides up on the far outside as they vie per, for position in back of. Polka Polenta, smooth selling out in front for Polka Polenta with Orlando Mojica. Recorder in 24.63 seconds at the five and a half. It's Polka Polenta who leads Sabuya close there for Edgar Morales and Manny Esquivel and Guanaki is three deep uncovered for the run to the half mile pole. Marcelino Pedroza Jr. with There Are No Rules running in fourth. For Samir Bermudez, Wellington Wonder in the yellow silks in fifth. Kimberly Dream being asked to pick up now on the off track by Jesus Castanon and with Deshaun Parker, Treasure of War is wide and last. Half mile for these Phillies mares, 48.42. They turn again, and Polka Polenta led but has dropped back sharply as Habuya leads to three for longs from home. With Guanaki coming up on the outside, they're on even terms. Guanaki and Habuya closer to the rail. With Wellington Wonder joined on the far outside by Treasure War, who's now on the move. Three quarters in one minute, 12.89 seconds. Heads are turned for home. It's Guanaki. Guanaki just has the upper hand on Habuya. Treasure of War steady gain. Wellington Wonder fourth. There are no rules in fifth. There's one for long to go for Guanaki. Guanaki continues to hold on to this advantage from Treasure of War, who's trying to get up here late to Guanaki. They're close to home. It's Guanaki. Treasure of War gamely on the outside for Manny Esquivel. It's Guanaki. Three quarters length from Treasure of War. They were seven clear for Wellington Wonder third, and Habuya finished fourth. In 146.29, 12, 8, 3, 11, ran fourth. Number 12, Guanaki, 2 to 1 first. 8, Treasure of War, 7 to 2, just could not reel Guanaki in. 3, Wellington Wonder, 5 to 1 third, and 11, Habuya, 6 to 1 on the fourth filly. 146.29, Sloppy, hold all until official, ran as a main track only. Air Force Blue filly for Cipriano Contreras. Manny Esquivel with Guanaki at two to one. Favorite starts off the late pick four.
me turning to the winner's circle, the 12 Guadalquivir. Manny Escabel with career win, 996. It's official. 996 for Manny. Guamaki is a four-year-old bay filly by Air Force Blue out of Winding Bay by Malibu Moon. Bred in Kentucky by Wesley Ward and Kent Spellman, her Kentucky breeders. For Cipriano Contreras is Contreras Stable Incorporated. Horseshoe Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections of Guamaki. Paid two to one favorite to official. 12.8 exact to $33 even. 50 cent trifecta paid $38.05. For 12 double and even $19. 50 cent pick three on races three, four, and five. That winning combination, $18.50 on the pick three. And with Habuya fourth, 10 cent superfecta, 12, 8, 3, 11, return $39.55. In that Phillies and Mayor's favorite was first, seven ran, 146.29 in the sixth, scratch five, clever Kate. Number five, Clever Kate has been scratched. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta, double pick three. 19 minutes to post time. Race six of nine, scheduled off here at 4.54. And happy Halloween. And they're off. Kimberly Dream hopped in the air at the start, drifts back toward last. Polka Polenta broke sharply. Habuya gets position, and Guanaki strides up in the three path as they splash into the first turn. It's Polka Polenta vying for the lead with Habuya. There are no rules right there at that off track rail. Wellington Wonder in tight quarters, fourth between horses, kept in by Guanaki, who strides up on the far outside as they buy per for position in back of Polka Polenta. Smooth selling out in front for Polka Polenta with Orlando Mojica, recorder in 24.63 seconds at the five and a half. It's Polka Polenta who leads Habuya close there for Edgar Morales and Manny Esquivel and Guanaki is three deep on covered for the run to the half mile pole. Marcelino Pedroza Jr. with There Are No Rules running in fourth. For Sammy Bermudez, Wellington Wonder in the yellow silks in fifth. Kimberly Dream being asked to pick up now on the off track by Jesus Castanon and with Deshaun Parker, Treasure of War is wide and last. Half mile for these Phillies mares, 48.42. They turn again and Polka Polenta led but has dropped back sharply as Habuya leads to three for longs from home with Guanaki coming up on the outside. They're on even terms. Guanaki and Habuya closer to the rail with Wellington Wonder joined on the far outside by Treasure War, who's now on the move. Three quarters in one minute, 12.89 seconds. Heads are turned for home. It's Guanaki. Guanaki just has the upper hand on Habuya. Treasure of War, steady gain. Wellington Wonder fourth. There are no rules in fifth. There's one for long to go for Guanaki. Guanaki continues to hold on to this advantage from Treasure of War, who's trying to get up here late to Guanaki. They're close to home. It's Guanaki. Treasure of War, gamely on the outside side for Manny Esquivel. That's Guanaki. Three quarters length from Treasure of War. They were seven clear from Wellington won their third and Habuya finished fourth.
Arr, it's time for today's edition of Data. It's my edition of Data here at Horseshoe Indianapolis today. Your favorite pirate taking you through the racing action here on a sloppy track. And arr, we're going to get to the data right now. A moment ago, trainer Cipriano Contreras adding another win to his uh, meet total here with Guanaki. Manny Esquivel, 996 career wins after Guanaki takes out that Phillies Mares race number five on a sloppy track here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. And Oh, how about Gennaro Garcia? He has a highest win percentage of 66.7%. That's spooky numbers. 24 starts with Indiana bred horses here. Trainer records with Indiana breds this year, courtesy of Horse Racing Nation. Ed DeRosa always loves Halloween Day. Tim Gleishaw has the second highest win percentage of 54.5% from 11 starts. Cipriano Contreras, we can add another winner to this uh, mark as uh, Sippy just won the last race with Guanaki under Manny Esquivel, as I mentioned. Sippy Contreras has the highest, third highest win percentage at 52.6 from 19 starters, and these are Indiana breds in 2022. And uh, the trainer records, again, courtesy of our friends at HRN and Tim Gleishaw. Tim has the highest return on investment at 40.9%. A look at some data here on Halloween Day 2022 at Horseshoe Indianapolis. It's been great to be with you all season long. Love the, uh, uh, oh, we're here. I, I did the same thing as Racing Rachel did. Your spooky pirate saying, I'm done. Have fun. Bye for now. Happy Halloween. It's over here. Nine minutes away from race number six as we move on with the uh, sloppy track. A mile and 70 yards here at Halloween at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Scratch number five, Clever Kate comes out of this race. Mile and 70 the distance for three-year-old Phillies all bred right here in the Hoosier State, the great state of Indiana. And I'm going to try number three in this spot. I agreed with many of the DRF selections in here with Velsheba, five-year-old mayor by Sangari, who is winless on a wet track, but does have two victories to her name, both on a fast main track. Joe Ramos going to be riding in here for Barbara McBride, who is winless on the year and looks to change that today. And I am a believer that they look to be lone speed. Now, this is a horse who hasn't always shown speed, did show speed last time out and ran great. Certainly outran the odds at 22-1. to 1. Third start off the layoff in here for Velsheba, uh, but she doesn't need the lead by any means. Now, last race she ran great on the pace, and with the way our track is playing today, you want to be close, you want to sit close. Joe Ramos likely to put her in the race early on. She has been uh, tactical, though, in nature, where she doesn't need the lead. In fact, both of her victories, she was well off the pace. They came with Joe Ramos aboard, so he's very familiar with this five-year-old mare in here. They had some uh, 
speed in front of them sprinting. Now, uh, this race will be two turns, so maybe that uh, tactical advantage where they sat off the pace while sprinting certainly helped them. That sprint speed uh, certainly does translate to route speed, but sometimes route speed doesn't translate to sprint speed. Belsheba, I think, is going to go right to the lead and look for Barbara McBride's first winner on the year in here as Joe Ramos likely to play catch me if you can at 3-1. to one. Lieutenant Kitty is a horse who's not going to be near the lead. Even though they're breaking from the rail, uh, Southwest Racing Stables and Gennaro Garcia's four-year-old filly by Majestic Harbor is not going to be on the lead. She's always sat off the pace. Two back, uh, she sat in dead last early on in her race, and she went from last to first with a big sweeping move and stayed on when it mattered most. Now, last race, 7-1, to one, uh, finished fifth in a nine-horse field. Certainly didn't run bad. The final time came up uh, a little bit quicker at 140.51. It was just a, a nice race by Elusive Justice and Amazingness, who went on to run very well in stakes competition. So Lieutenant Kitty certainly didn't run much different between October 19th and September 29th, but does come back on 12 days rest. Uh, has been at the allowance protected ranks since being claimed for 12500 A third, a win, a fifth since then. And you get our leading rider with uh, one of our lead, or contending for our leading trainer in Gennaro Garcia aboard Lieutenant Kitty, who's been consistent, looks to push those earnings up over six figures in here at seven to two. But the value player, in my opinion, and not much value anymore, are currently favored is quick and easy. Ten to one on the morning line, but the better sniff this one out. And I think this two to one is here to stay. It doesn't look like a horse who's just taking early action and going to drift up close to the morning line. I think uh, Quick and Easy is is going to be live in this spot right now. Two to one, likely to go off somewhere around that two or three to one range. And you can see why this is a four year old filly who's got experience on a wet track. Looks plenty fit down here in the walking ring. Uh, ears up, looks happy as can be. Four starts on a wet track, three second place finishes. Ran a good fourth place last time out, but the big thing in here, a horse continuing to go two turns, had been sprinting the majority of the summer. The last two races went two turns, including only being beaten by five lengths in a $100,000 stakes race back on September 14th. Another one who exits that same October 19th race, but does need to make up four lengths on Velsheba in here. But the money has come in. We'll see if the early money, the smart money, on quick and easy at 2-1. to one. But I'm going to try Velsheba to get Barbara McBride home. A winner in here with Joe Ramos. Third start off the layoff. Second time going two turns. 3-1. to one. A great value play in here as we're just four minutes away from race number six.
Well, horses stepping onto the track now for the sixth race. This was carded for the main track over the one mile and 70 yards, a field of eight. One mile, 70 yards, scratch five, Clever Kate. Number five, Clever Kate has been scratched. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta, double pick three, two minutes to post time, sloppy track, two minutes. Scheduled at 4.54, one minute to post time, round about a minute. The horses are approaching the starting gate.
The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. At one mile, 70 yards going in, Lieutenant Kitty. Marcelino Pedroza Jr. with the win on the card. Fernando de la Cruz with Quick and Easy. Yellow, purple, and diamonds. Deshaun Parker, Love Drunk. Noble prize. Gage Holmes won our third of the day. Rodney Prescott with Starlet Express. Val Sheba. Joe Ramos swept the opening double. Two back. Rafael Mojica Jr. with Not a Role Model. Quick and easy, 8 to 5 favorite. One more, Simi Bermudez with Botox Katie. They're in the gate. They're off. Even start. Quick and easy. Val Sheba settles. Not a role model, and they're headed off by Love Drunk, who's going out toward the lead for Deshaun Parker. It's Love Drunk, and toward the inside, not a role model, quick and easy, gold, and the purple silks there between horses. With Botox Kitty ranging up on the far outside as these Phillies mares go to the back of the track and fell uh, toward the inside is Val Sheba in fourth. Quick and easy is outside her. Then it's a break of two more. Two on the outside, Starlet Express was just gained sixth. Lieutenant Kitty taken back and settles, and Noble Prize has drifted back to eighth and last. The quarter, 25.19 seconds. Five furlongs from the winning line. It's not a role model, but leads up the inside for Rafael Mojica Jr. with Botox Kitty second close up for Sammy Bermudez. Love Drunk in third. Quick and Easy is fourth for Fernando de la Cruz, and now making progress is Quick and Easy past Love Drunk. Val Sheba's been saving ground in fifth. Noble Prize is a wide sixth, and Lieutenant Kitty and Starlet Express. Half mile 49.59 seconds. Around the far turn they go. Botox Kitty takes the top from a looming up Quick and Easy with Lieutenant Kitty now in third. And Noble Prize is gaining in the four path. Then Starlet Express in fifth from Not a Role Model, Love Drunk, and Val Sheba's last. It's Quick and Easy and Botox Katie. These two first to face the Halloween crowd. Three quarters at 114.66. Quick and Easy just has the advantage on Botox Katie, who tries to battle on one for long to go. Quick and Easy and Botox Katie. And these two, it's a scrappy battle past the 16th. Lieutenant Kitty will be third best. Then Noble Prize fourth. It's Quick and Easy kept to the task by Fernando Little Cruz. Quick and Easy. It wasn't easy. Easy, but it was a win. Quick and easy over a game. Botox Katie. Lieutenant Kitty third and Noble Prize finished fourth. And 144.82, 6 9, 1, 2, ran fourth. First number six, quick and easy at 8 to 5. 9, Botox Katie, 10 to 1. Second game runner up, 6 9, 1, Lieutenant Kitty. 9 to 2, third, and 2, Noble Prize. 6 to 1 on the fourth. 6 9, 1, 2, 144.82, hold all wagers until official. Goes the favorites way here, eight to five, quick and easy for Nando de la Cruz for Joe Davis, Pepper, and Don Wright. The what now Philly, quick and easy at eight to five, takes it out, 144.82.
returning to the winner's circle. The six, quick and easy with Fernando de la Cruz. It's official. Quick and easy. Four-year-old bay filet by what now? Out of the street hero, Mayor, wife in the wind. Bred in Indiana by Don Wright. Joe Davis trains for Pepper and Don Wright. Horseshoe Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections of quick and easy. 520 to win as the race favorite official. Race six official. Nice battle that through the stretch between Quick and Easy and Botox Katie. Favor takes it out, $5.20. Pick three paid $24.55. Exacta, six nine forty sixty. The 50 cent trifecta, six nine one paid $48.30. 12 double twenty three sixty. Noble Prize, fourth. Six nine one two ten cent superfecta paid $29.86. Again, the pick three, $24.55. Five was a non runner. Favorite won it quick and easy. Eight ran 144.82 in the goo. Sloppy track race seven. Made into a little Philly sprint. Scratch the 12 unbridled talent and 13 bicarb Betty. Scratch the 12 and number 13. Exact trifecta superfecta. On the uh, made into a little Philly sprint lies the 10 cent pentafecta wager. Back in play. 10 cent grand high five. Pentafecta bets. Double final pick three on a nine race card. Sloppy track. Race seven, maiden juvenile Philly sprint scheduled at 525. That's in 20 minutes time. Trick or treat. They're off. Even start. Quick and easy. Val Sheba settles. Not a role model. And they're headed off by Love Drunk, who's going out toward the lead for Deshaun Parker. It's Love Drunk. And toward the inside, not a role model. Quick and easy. Gold and the purple silks there between horses. With Botox Kitty ranging up on the far outside as these Phillies mares go to the back of the track and fell it. And toward the inside is Val Sheba in fourth. Quick and easy is outside her. Then it's a break of two more. Two. On the outside, Starlet Express, who's just gained sixth. Lieutenant Kitty taken back and settles, and Noble Prize has drifted back to eighth and last. The quarter, 25.19 seconds. Five furlongs from the winning line. It's not a role model, but leads up the inside for Rafael Mojica Jr. with Botox Kitty second close up for Sammy Bermudez. Love Drunk in third. Quick and easy is fourth for Fernando de la Cruz, and now making progress is Quick and easy past Love Drunk. Val Sheba's been saving ground in fifth. Noble Prize is a wide sixth, and Lieutenant Kitty and Starlet Express. Half mile 49.59 seconds. Around the far turn they go. Botox Katie takes the top from a looming up quick and easy with Lieutenant Kitty now in third. And Noble Prize is gaining in the four path. Then Starlet Express in fifth. From not a role model, Love Drunk and Val Sheba's last. It's quick and easy and Botox Katie. These two first to face the Halloween crowd. Three quarters at 114.66. Quick and easy just has the advantage on Botox Katie, who tries to battle on one for long to go. Quick and easy and Botox Katie. And these two, it's a scrappy battle past the 16th. Lieutenant Kitty will be third best. Then Noble Prize fourth. It's quick and easy kept to the task by Fernando Little Cruz. Quick and easy. It wasn't easy but it was a win quick and easy over a game Botox Katie Lieutenant Kitty third and Noble Prize finished fourth
jumping out of the lead. He's challenging for a second, going into the clubhouse turn. Race seven here at Horseshoe Indianapolis is a two-year-old maiden special weight. We've got a nice field here of 11. The outside horses have been scratched, the 12 and the 13. I think the 12 changes things a little bit. However, we've got plenty of options with an 11 horse field here. The kitten is who I'm gonna go with on top. Deshaun Parker, my man, coming off of a stakes triple Saturday. Cannot say how happy I was for him and the connections of all the winning horses on Saturday. Two-year-old filly by Unbridled Express, one of the top Indiana sires. George Leonard, Cowboy George, one of my favorite trainers who's been in Indiana for as long, longer than I have. Um, he has got a very, very nice filly here for Ed Wright, who has bred and owned her. Now, she hasn't got the win, obviously, but she has been close in four of her six. The one third place finish that she had, she missed by half a length for a third. Very talented filly. I think she just needs to put it all together. And do note that she is stretching out to six furlongs for the first time here today. Could be the difference. Then I'm going to go to six, Pump It Up Justice. I can't say enough about the Justice Farm Bread. Um, Phillies, Colts, they just do amazingly here. This one, Aaron West trains and is making its fifth lifetime start. It's a couple of close seconds and has showed a little bit of form on the slop. Whilst for fourth by a length and a half, I think she liked it, and I think second time on and off track might be a little bit of an improvement. Could put it together today with Josh Morales aboard. And then we go to the eight, Evil Intentions. This is a first-time starter here, a two-year-old filly by neck and neck. Uh, Rob Dobbs is the trainer, and Rodney Prescott is aboard. 
This is the first time she's ran. Her works look really good, and I like her breeding. Neck and neck, and then a Sky Mesa dam. Um, I'm just interested to see what she'll do. I think she'll sweeten up the trifecta. Who knows about the slop, though, but I'm sticking with what I liked this morning, and I'm going with the Evil Intentions. 368 for me here in the seventh. Good luck.
the horses coming onto the track for the seventh race. A sloppy track for this maiden juvenile filly sprint over the six furlongs. A field of 11. Scratch 12, unbridled talent, and 13 by Carbetti. Scratch the 12 and number 13. On parade, exacta trifecta superfecta. There is the 10 cent grand high five. Double final pick three on a nine race card. Sloppy track. Scheduled at 525 this maiden juvenile filly sprint. 525, that's round about a minute away. The horses are approaching the starting gate.
The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. At six furlongs. Loading. Santo Sanjor with She's a Nut. The first filling in. Josh Morales with Pump It Up Justice. Now Sammy Bermudez with Not the Ray, Drew Two. Legs for days. Brian Rivera claims the seven pound apprentice allowance. Legs for days went in well. Sean Parker with Dickinson in the gold. Rodney Prescott, Evil Intentions, making her bow. Or Helio Miranda with Arts Creek Music. Evil Intentions has joined the line. Orlando Mejica with Rhythm Forever drew five. Gage Holmes with Mean Elanita. Two back. Fernando Lada Cruz with Zapita. It's even money to Kitten over the six furlongs. Stand by. One more. Dishing it out. Marcino Pedroza Jr. for Gary Patrick. They're in the gate. They're off and sprinting. Zapita blasting out of there. Dishing it out on the far outside. There's Mart's Creek Music. We now starts a bid. Nearest the inside is Nakhtare and the Purple Silks, and Rhythm Forever is also in that trio, but it's Zapita. Went to the front here for Fernando de la Cruz. Zapita crosses and clears. Mart's Creek Music, and Nakhtare holds the rail. Rhythm Forever is fourth, going past the half-mile pole. Pump it up, Justice in fifth. Then the newcomer, Evil Intentions, looking to gain a wide sixth at the three and a half. It's a break of three more to Legs for Days to Kitten with the rail still well back here as they round the far turn to Kitten with three furlongs to go. Then it's a break of three more more to uh, Mean Elenita and dishing it out has drifted back to 11th. The quarter was 22.29 as these maiden two-year-old fillies come past the quarter pole. Zapita as Evil Intentions looms up now for Zapita as they straighten away. Half mile 46.14 seconds. Evil Intentions coming with her run up to Zapita who just clings on. One for long to go. Zapita's holding on to this advantage from Evil Intentions who's now fully stretched. Then pump it up Justice to Kitten with a late bid toward the rail then knock no ray and Mart's Creek music but close to home for Fernando Leda Cruz. Zapita has scored the winning run by three and a half. Evil Intention second, Pump It Up Justice third. Then Mean Elenita on the wire with the kitten. Dish and out was next. Mart's Creek music from knock no ray who headed the rest. Ten eight six, and then it's a photo for fourth after the maiden two-year-old Philly sprint. 113.08. 17 to 1, 10, Zapita first. Eight evil intentions. Eight to one second, six pump it up justice. Four to one third. Stand by for the fourth and fifth for the grand high five from the judges. 113.08, Fernando de la Cruz, Gennaro Garcia. It's a 17 to 1 on Zapita after the maiden juvenile Phillies. The judges posted number nine, Mean Elanita, 31 to one fourth, uh, three to Kitten fifth, 10, eight, six, nine, three, ran fifth.
three turning to the winner's circle, the 10, Zapita with Fernando de la Cruz. Zapita, two-year-old chestnut filly by Pass Rush. Out of Zapita by Ghost Zapper, Brennan, Indiana by Swifty Farms, Incorporated her Indiana breeder. Racing for Gennaro Garcia's Southwest Racing Stables, Incorporated. Horseshoe Indianapolis congratulates the winning connections of Zapita. Takes out the maiden juvenile filly sprint at 17 to 1. It's official. Pentafecta paid $3,786.84 with DeKitt in fifth. 10.8 Exacta, $323. 50 Cent Trifecta, 10.86, dollars $455.65. 6.10 Double paid $112.60, $0.10 cent Superfecta, $411.19. Mean Elanita ran fourth. And the 50 Cent Pick 3 on races 5, 6, and 7 paid $193.65. In that maiden two-year-old filly sprint, Sloppy track, 12 and 13 were non-runners. Favorite fifth, 11 ran, 113.08. Couple more to go on this Halloween day. Race eight from the uh, next sprint, scratch three, New Year's Delight. Number three, New Year's Delight has been scratched. Exacta trifecta, superfecta. Again, the 10 cent grand high five. Start of the final double. Ninth race, no scratches. Ninth race, quarter horse maiden over the 400 yards. Sloppy, now no wind. Ninth race, number two, Princess Beach, Jose Ruiz. No scratches. There's a jockey change in the ninth. Quarter horse maiden, Jose Ruiz on two, Princess Beach, sloppy track. Post time for the eighth race at 5.56. Off and sprinting. Zapita blasting out of there, dishing it out on the far outside. There's Mart's Creek Music, who now starts a bid. Nearest the inside is Nakhnare and the Purple Silks, and Rhythm Forever is also in that trio. But it's Zapita went to the front here for Fernando de la Cruz. Zapita crosses and clears. Mart's Creek Music and Nakhnare holds the rail. Rhythm Forever is fourth, going past the half mile pole. Pump it up, Justice in fifth. Then the newcomer, Evil Intentions, looking to gain a wide sixth at the three and a half. It's a break of three more to Legs for Days to Kitten with the rail still well back here as they round the far turn to Kitten with three furlongs to go. Then it's a break of three more to uh, Mean Elenita and dishing it out has drifted back to 11th. The quarter was 22.29 as these maiden two-year-old fillies come past the quarter pole. Zapita as Evil Intentions looms up now for Zapita as they straighten away. Half mile 46.14 seconds. Evil Intentions coming with her run up to Zapita who just clings on. One for long to go. Zapita's holding on to this advantage from Evil Intentions who's now fully stretched. Then pump it up Justice to Kitten with a late bid toward the rail. Then Knock no rain and Mart's Creek music, but close to home for Fernando de la Cruz. Zapita has scored the winning run by three and a half. Evil Intention second, pump it up Justice third. Then Mean Elenita on the wire with the kitten. Dish run out was next. Mart's Creek music from Knock.
Racing Rachel here to tell you about our turf sponsor, Xmark Mowers. They offer amazing discounts for horsemen and they are designed and engineered with over 35 years of innovation to keep Xmark mowers on the leading edge of cutting. I recently bought an Xmark mower and it is the most comfortable and best cutting mower we have ever owned. Xmark, engineered by us, trusted by them, ready to work for you. Dedicated equine discounts and active equine participants save by calling 877-905-0004. It's the nature of all Caesars to rule the world. Which means Caesars rule the world of sports. Which means Caesars rule the world of sports books. Ergo, Caesars rule the world of sports book apps. Those are the rules. Ten minutes away from race number eight, and I wish we had ten more races to go so I didn't have to go trick-or-treating the rest of the night. Certainly much rather gamble and hopefully be victorious here at Horseshoe Indianapolis, but we've made it to the last and final thoroughbred race. Miss Martha will take you through the final quarter horse race as we've got uh, both breeds in the late daily double, just nine minutes away from race number eight, all looking for their second career victory. Scratch number three, New Year's Delight. Six furlongs going to be the distance in here. And I happen to fancy a long shot. Tis Abbey, 13 to 1 off that 15 to 1 morning line. Gage Holmes looking for a winner in here for Barbara McBride. 0 for 2 on a wet main track, but does have two third place finishes. The lone victory came at this distance, but 0 for 17 here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Certainly a little bit pesky, but I thought. Ran better than it looked last time out. Exits a race uh, that I thought was very live for this level. Went off at 8-1. to one, uh, Ran fifth in a 10-horse field. And this is the first time in a while, or the second time in a while, that this horse has gotten some class relief. Had been at the allowance level most of the year last year. Had been sprinting earlier this year. Tried two sprints, then stretched it out. Uh, goes back and should be fit in this spot. Exit some tough races at the sprinting level where they were protected at the allowance ranks, losing to Miss Love Shack. We'll see if Tiz Abbey can keep up early, but should be plenty fit on the cutback for 
the five-year-old mare by Colonel John. We certainly know that her daddy loved the dirt or the wet track. We'll see if she can get her first wet victory in here for Tiz Abbey with Gage Holmes aboard for Barbara McBride. But inside of her is going to be I Want to Be Perfect, who is trying the wet uh, main track for the second time. Didn't run all that well. In fact, one of the worst races of the career came on a wet surface in the past. But I'm willing to forgive that because it was also the first race of her career. Didn't know much about the starting gate that day. Was off slowly and really never got the run of the race. Since then, she's been showing much better early speed in here. Tracy Wisner owns Trains and Bread. This four-year-old filly by Perfect Circle, and she projects to be the one to cash. To cash. You saw in the last race that if you have the lead, you can certainly get to the wire first on a day like today. Uh, tired can't be tired, and so if you have that lead turning for home, you've got an excellent opportunity to win, and it looks like Joshua Morales is going to be clean cap to boot, at least to the top of the lane. We'll see if he can be clean headed back to the winner's circle in here. Six furlongs could be a little bit pesky for I Want to Be Perfect, but we'll see if she can get the job done. She's got one way to go, and that is on the lead to play catch me at the end. Six to one, but all the money has come in on Anita. Randy Klopp, same Bermudas in here. Randy Klopp has been hot, super hot, and he's trying to keep pace with Gennaro Garcia, who won last race, so he's trying to uh, stay atop or near the top of that trainer's title, which is going to go right down to the wire. Uh, Klopp and Gennaro have certainly separated themselves from the rest of the field in that aspect and it would be nice to win and respond to Gennaro's win last time or in the last race I uh, didn't really get into the race at all last time out I remember it fondly because I had Anita on top and we were drawn on the rail and really no excuse since then Rock of Cashel came back to run very poorly so I'm not sure if that October 10th race was all that live I'm willing to forgive one start. Oftentimes, in handicapping, you have the right horse, the wrong race. That could be the case in here, but the one thing that led me a different direction was Anita drew the rail again. Now, I'm willing to forgive the rail last time out as the beaten favorite, but now going right back to the rail um, could certainly improve, but just never got into the bit, never looked comfortable down on the inside. We'll see if things are different today. Sam Bermudez will be aboard. He'll try and guide her out and guide her right to the winner's circle. Uh, currently favored again. It looks like the betters are going right back to the well after suffering defeat on October 10th. I'm unwilling. Are you? We'll find out six minutes from now for race number eight as a full field of nine set to go six furlongs in here as John G. Dooley's final thoroughbred call of the meet.
the horses coming onto the track now for the eighth race. This sprint over the six furlongs. Scratch three, New Year's Delight. Scratch the three. Exacta, trifecta, superfecta. There is the 10 cent grand high five and start of our final double. Ninth race, we close with that quarter horse maiden over the 400 yards. Stoppy track and there's no wind. Ninth race, there are no scratches. Two Princess Beach, Jose Ruiz rides to Princess Beach in the quarter horse maiden finale. Sloppy, no wind. Two minutes to post time, two minutes. We're less than one minute away from post time.
The horses are approaching the starting gate. The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. Samir Bermudez with the Nata. My kiss is so sweet. Both for Randy Klopp are loading up. Sando Sanjo with Catch a Fallen Star joins the Nata. Josh Morales with I Want to Be Perfect drew two. Sharp Justice. Fernando de la Cruz riding for another win on the card. Now the five-year-old Tiz Abbey. Gage Holmes claims the five pounds. Kiss is so sweet. Again, Joe Ramos swept the opening double. Kiss is so sweet in. Just a couple of fillings back. Edgar Morales with Jinja, don't you know? Here's the sky view. Anita, the eight to five favorite over the six furlongs. One more Rodney Prescott with Runaway Fever. Eight fillies and one mare to Zambi in the sprint, sloppy track. They're in the beat. And they're off. That was Time to Confess, who was very poorly away, drops back the last time to confess. Kisses so sweet, broke sharp. Kisses so sweet, then toward the inside, Anita, both for Randy Klopp. And they're one, two, with I Want to Be Perfect now, making a split to that Phillies pair as they vie for this, heading past the half-mile pole where Anita is just the leader. Then comes Sharp Justice off them in fourth, with on the outside, Runaway Fever in fifth at the three and a half. Then comes Ginger, don't you know, in the yellow silks, who is racing five clear from Catch a Fallen Star after breaking very poor. Time to confess is on the far outside, and Tiz Abbey, the five-year-old, has drifted back to ninth. The quarter was 22.63 seconds. These leaders coming toward the quarter pole. Kisses so sweet and Anita. They're still battling for it as Sharp Justice now looks to launch a three path push. Heads are turned for home. It's Kisses so sweet. Top of the lane, half mile 46.16. Kisses so sweet gets those left-handers. Drifts off her line, but she's well clear. Kisses so sweet, and she has the kick. It's Kisses so sweet past the 16th from a gobbling up ground. Catch a fallen star. They're close to home. It's Kisses so sweet. Kisses so sweet. Catch a fallen star. Kisses so sweet on the wire. Catch a fallen star made that close for Kisses so sweet as Joe Ramos was riding for a Halloween hat trick. Then farther back was Tiz Abbey with Anita. Photo, Kisses so sweet, trying to repel a bearing down catch a fallen star in the slop. At five to two, she found the wire first. Number five, Kisses So Sweet. Six, Catch a Fallen Star. 11 to one, hard charging second. It was that close in the end. Kisses So Sweet over Catch a Fallen Star. One, Anita, two to one third. Four, Tiz Abbey, fourth, and Sharp Justice for the Pentafecta. It's three on Halloween for Joe Ramos. Here for Randy Klopp. Kisses so sweet at five to two in one twelve point eleven five six one four seven.
We turning to the winner's circle, the five kisses so sweet. Joe Ramos with a Halloween hat trick. Kisses so sweet is a three year old Bay Philly by Clint. Out of kisses from Kate by Harlan's Holiday, Brennan, Indiana by Dr. Greg and Deanne Bear. For Roger Spies' Speed Stable LLC and Brandy Klopp, five to two on kisses so sweet. Takes out the distaff sprint in 112.11. It's official. Sharp Justice ran fifth for the Penta Fecta, 5.6 exact to 62.40. 50 cent trifecta, $65.85. 10 cent superfecta, 5.614. The Mayor Tis Abbey ran fourth, $39.73. Tuesday Street Fire 6, a jackpot will roll over, $6,788. With Sharp Justice fifth, the 10 cent Penta Fecta, paid $277.24, 5.6147. Ten five double two ninety eight eighty and the fifty cent late pick four two hundred uh, nine hundred forty eight dollars ninety cents for the late pick four nine forty eight ninety pick five twenty eight hundred thirty dollars ninety cents last of the day race nine quarter horse maiden over the four hundred yards sloppy no scratches to Princess Beach Jose Ruiz rides to Princess Beach waits okay. Overweights reported, the 5-6 is taken cash plus 4, 6 Escondido Warrior plus 3, 8 Santa B first 2 over, and 9 Jet into Midnight plus 5 pounds. 1 Stony Beach is owned by Deborah Smith. Juan Marquez for Randy Smith, Deborah Smith owns 1 Stony Beach. It's Jose Ruiz on number 2 Princess Beach. Exacta trifecta superfecta, 10 cent pentafecta bets. Post time for the quarter horse maiden, sloppy track 624. Today's edition of Dooley's Legends goes Ron Venturini's way. Congratulations to Ron. Was playing online at Horseshoe Indie Contests at gmail.com. Way to go, Ron. Picks up the $100 gift card. Today's edition of Dooley's Legends. Ron Venturini, the $100 winner. And the latest, Dooley's Legends at Horseshoe Indianapolis. Way to go, Ron. They're in the game. And they're off. That was Time to Confess, who was very poorly away, drops back the last time to confess. Kisses so sweet, broke sharp. Kisses so sweet, then toward the inside, Anita, both for Randy Klopp. And they're one, two, with I Want to Be Perfect now, making a split to that Phillies pair as they vie for this, heading past the half-mile pole where Anita is just the leader. Then comes Sharp Justice off them in fourth, with on the outside, Runaway Fever in fifth at the three and a half. Then comes Ginger, don't you know, in the yellow silks, who is racing five clear from Ketchup Bowl and Star after breaking very poor. Time to confess is on the far outside, and Tiz Abbey, the five-year-old, has drifted back to ninth. The quarter was 22.63 seconds. These leaders coming toward the quarter pole. Kisses so sweet, and Anita. They're still battling for it as Sharp Justice now looks to launch a three-path push. Heads are turned for home. It's Kisses so sweet. Top of the lane, half mile 46.16. Kisses so sweet gets those left-handers. Drifts off her line, but she's well clear. Kisses so sweet, and she has the kick. It's Kisses so sweet past the 16th from a gobbling up ground to catch a fallen star. They're close to home. It's Kisses so sweet. Kisses so sweet, catch a fallen star. Kisses so sweet on the wire. Catch a fallen star made that close for Kisses so sweet as Joe Ramos was riding for a Halloween hat trick.
we're going to close out today's card with a quarter horse allowance, two-year-olds. These are registered Indiana breads. And you know, maybe it's not Halloween, but uh, got to close out the card with my costume, which is a salute to the Houston Astros. I never gave up on Jose Altuve. How could you? All right, I guess back to the action <laughs> All right, so as far as today's field, I'm going to go on top with number three, Chicks Zuma. This horse has shown a lot of promise for trainer Paul Martin. He's a son of Jess Zuman, and he qualified for the 132,000 Blue River Derby. Now, no luck there on July 23rd. He was bumped and finished last, but it was a very, very tough field. Now, a uh, clean trip is going to be essential, but I think he's got a good chance of breaking the maiden, and now he's teaming with jockey Jose Ruiz. All right, let's go next to, oh, let's talk about Tony Cunningham. He's going to saddle number five, six is take, taking cash, who's looking to break the maiden in her 14th try. She's a filly by Jess Zuman. She ran a very good race on October 17th. That was 300 yards. She was closing and completed the exacta. Wanted to congratulate Tony on a very, and his team for a very, very good win uh, on Champions Day with um, RK Dana in the Governor's Stakes and also the first stakes win for jockey uh, Francisco Quintero. So congratulations to him. All right, next up, let's take a look at number two and that's Princess Beach. Uh, she's made three starts at today's distance of 400 yards for trainer Tim Eggleston. Uh, the Escondido Beach Philly finished very well in her most recent effort on August 8th. And then uh, Tim sent her out for a 220 yard work three weeks ago for her comeback. I think she's gonna be pretty tough in this race as well. Um, and next we have two entrants from the barn of leading conditioner Randy Smith. He captured both the QHRAI Derby and the richest race we've had here in quarter horse history, the Miss Roxy Little Futurity on Saturday's Indiana Champions Day. Again, congratulations to Randy and his team. Now he's gonna saddle two. I kind of like number one, Stony Beach, a little bit better. Uh, she makes her first start since July 23rd when she was bumped and finished ninth. Uh, she's a daughter of Brimstone, bred by Sherry Miller. And speaking of fun days today, how about Sherry Miller's birthday? Born on Halloween, she's a great breeder, breeder and a great uh, supporter of Indiana racing. All right, so uh, Stony Beach uh, drew the rail, might be pretty good, and will be ridden by leading quarter horse jockey Juan Marquez. All right, I'm going 3-5-2-1 in today's finale. Good luck to all, and happy Halloween.
The horse is called Postward for the ninth and final. This quarter horse made it over the 400 yards. Sloppy track now, no wind, a field of nine. Two Princess Beach, Jose Ruiz rides two Princess Beach, waits okay. Jose Ruiz, uh, numero dos. Juan Stoney Beach is owned by Deborah Smith. Juan Marquez for Randy Smith. Debbie Smith owns one. Stoney Beach leads the parade. Overweights the five plus four, six plus three, eight plus two, and nine plus five. For R.C. Diamond, debuts with a flipping holder. Flipping holder for number four. Exacta trifecta, superfecta, 10 cent quarter horse, grand high five. Sloppy track, two minutes to post time. Two minutes. The horses are approaching the starting gate.
The horses have reached the starting gate. It is now post time. Stony Beach, Chick Zuma, the newcomer, R.C. Diamond Hughes, flipping halters. Chick Zuma has joined Stony Beach, R.C. Diamond loaded. Six is taken cash through five. Black turquoise stripes. Princess Beach is in. Escondido Warrior coming up. Travel in Memphis. Like Stony Beach. Both for leading quarter horse trainer Randy Smith. Now Cena be first. Six is taking cash. Five to two. It's the final favorite. Luz Martinez for Tony Cunningham. Six is taken cash and one more. Giovanni Vasquez Gomez with Jet into Midnight at 400 yards. Sloppy track, last of the day. They're all in. And they're off. And Stony Beach rockets out from the rail draw. Stony Beach in front for Juan Marquez past the 330 in pursuit. Chick Zuma with in between horses. Princess Beach has blue blinkers, but it's Stony Beach. Stony Beach leads inside the final 110 yards. Stony Beach, Juan Marquez for Randy Smith, Debbie Smith. Stony Beach out to the maiden ranks. Chick Zuma second. Then Princess Beach third with sixes taking cash and jet into midnight. One, three, two, five, the nine win, fifth in the quarter horse maiden. Number one, Stony Beach, five to two first. Three, Chick Suma, three to one second, two, Princess Beach, five to one third. Five, six is taken cash, five to two fourth, the nine jet into midnight for a quarter horse pentafecta. Hold all bets until official. What a meet it's been for Juan Marquez and Randy Smith, the quarter horse meet leaders. Record setting, record setting seasons for both here at Horseshoe Indianapolis. This for Debbie Smith. 20.28 after the maiden, sloppy track, 20.28 at Stony Beach. She's out to the maiden ranks. The result of the finale official. It's been a record setting season here for Juan Marquez, Randy Smith, a team with Stony Beach for Debbie Smith.
Stony Beach with Juan Marquez, three-year-old Sorrel Philly by Brimstone. At a Cocoa Beach by Escondido Beach, bred here in Indiana by Sherry Miller. Randy, Debbie Smith, 20.28, Stony Beach. She's out to the maiden ranks at 20.28, Sloppy. Official, the 10 cent Pentafecta with Jet into Midnight fifth, paid $75.15. Final pick three on the card, paid two seventy nine ninety. One three exact the thirty one sixteen fifty cent trifecta one three two twenty five dollars seventy five cents five one double forty four twenty ten cent superfecta one three two five paid sixteen dollars and nine cents twenty point twenty eight sloppy that concludes our live racing program for today happy Halloween once again live racing resumes tomorrow upcoming race week Tuesday Wednesday post time two thirty Thursday off from two ten p.m. Eastern you can always follow and tweet us at HS Indy Racing. Until next time, for all of us here at Horseshoe Indianapolis, it's been my pleasure this season from the broadcast booth. Track announcer John G. Dooley, happy Halloween, and to all, a good night. And they're off. And Stony Beach rockets out from the rail draw. Stony Beach in front for Juan Marquez past the 330 in pursuit. Chick Zuma with in between horses. Princess Beach has blue blinkers, but it's Stony Beach. Stony Beach leads inside the final 110 yards. Stony Beach, Juan Marquez for Randy Smith, Debbie Smith. Stony Beach out to the maiden ranks. Chick Zuma second. Then Princess Beach third with sixes taking cash and two.